Okay, let's get started here. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I have the air conditioning full blast in my ear right now. So <laughs> hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, welcome to week one live lecture two. Um, we usually aren't going to be meeting during this time. Um, the next few weeks, it's just a little switch up this week because of the Memorial Day weekend kind of screwed things up a little bit. So I appreciate you guys being patient and flexible. Um, and I guess that's the, the good thing about being an online student is, um, you know, because of the lecture recordings are accessible at any time, you guys can make it work for your schedule. All right, so hopefully if you have missed the, the first live lecture from yesterday, please go back and listen to the recording. It should be posted. I also, and I'll share, share this with you as well, if you didn't receive this or didn't look in, in the announcements, always check the announcements. I've, that's how I communicate with you guys and make sure you're uh, getting that information. I just did a wrap up from yesterday's first live lecture here, and I just have some reminders in there as well. Um, reminders about today's lecture as well as a really interesting um, article that may help you with your strategy for your content strategy this week. We kind of kind of glossed over it yesterday, um, but that's the link to that uh, article. So if you're having issues with, you know, coming up with your content strategy, that will definitely kind of point you in the right direction as well. Um, yesterday we did, I did kind of walk through how you should kind of go about your content strategy. So if you have any questions, hopefully that'll clarify things. Just listen to the recording. Um, in also attached is the assignment one dot zip. And in that there's two files. One is a um, InDesign file that is just kind of like an optional template that I showed in yesterday's demo that you, you may use if you want. And that's just to kind of get you started. And um, also in there is, uh, uh, what else did I put in there? Hmm, no, I can't remember. There's something else in there, give me one second. I think I have it in my folder here. Oh, the Excel sheet with the um, facts in there. So the Excel sheet, which um, you will be plugging in the numbers for, if you're using that, uh, you can. You don't have to use that. That's just for. That's for you if you want to kind of, you know, utilize that. But it's an Excel sheet showing you the facts from the assignment one, where it has little X's, and I should probably open that up just to show you real quick because I don't even think we looked at it yesterday. Um, but where the little X's are is where you'll be plugging in the most recent information if you're using that Excel sheet. And so it's completely up to you if you want to use it. Let me share my screen here. This is what it will look like. So um, this is just showing you some pie charts, examples, if you want to kind of use that. Now some of these totals might be a little different Zoom back up here. This is the information I'm like, I'm talking about got my emails here. Um, so based on the website that is provided in assignment one, these totals will change. Okay. I don't know how updated this is. I'll have to cross reference. Looks like it's 2017. This might be updated. Um, but you, you may use that if you think that uh, will help with your overall content strategy. Now, just remember, you guys don't have to do um, an actual poster just yet. This is just gathering your information, showing your strategy, your design process um, for your assignment one. So you don't actually have to have a poster, finished poster for this week. I just want to see that you're kind of working through your strategy. This is for you, like your process on how you're going to get to your final poster for week two. So it kind of is a, a continuation for week two project. All right, don't forget your um, discussion post, initial discussion post is due, um, what is today? Today's Wednesday, yes. So tonight by midnight, your initial post is due. If you post past the deadline, so if you're posting your initial post after Wednesday, 
um, you won't get full credit, obviously. Um, and then if you don't post at all after the, the date of the due date for discussions, you will not get credit at all. So it's not one of those things where you get a grace period, just kind of an FYI. Um, there's a reason for that too, because if you're posting um, the next week to your, the week prior, nobody really is gonna go back and, and look at what people are posting in the week one discussion. So you're not gonna gain as much as you can from it. So the idea is to post during the week that it's due as soon as possible so that people can add to your, your thread and you guys can gain as much as you can from it. So make sure you're doing that. All right. Um, so yesterday we went over your first lecture. We went over um, assignment one and your discussion one and just kind of did a little review, um, talked about a few things in regards to infographics. You guys will be creating an infographic for assessment one. So that's what we're going to be going over today. Um, so let, let's go ahead and take a look at the assessment one information here. Get right into it. All right, so this is the uh, creating an infographic from a template. Uh, using a template to create an infographic still leaves the designer with some crucial decisions. The overall layout design, the icons or image, images, colors, fonts, and graphs you choose will greatly impact the message and, and the successful telling of the story. As always, think of your audience. What is the best way to catch and hold their attention? Advertisers often refer to the hook, something that triggers an emotional response in the audience and makes a connection that gets them hooked. Visual information also needs to have that hook to be effective. The placement and size of the visual hook become important. For example, placing it in the center for emphasis or at the end as a reward makes it more effective as a story. If a joke starts out with a punchline, then what is the use of the beginning? There are different options for visualizing research numbers, and each can be presented in a creative and captivating way. For example, percentages should show well in pie charts, but numerical values are better in unique bar graphs. If numbers don't fit a consistent scale, using symbols to quantify the number in a diagram may be a clearer, more interesting option. Carefully considering the options and choices of the template make, makes it more unique and will let your skills as a designer shine through. All right, so this is your prompt. So for this assessment, I'm going to be your client. I want you to make an, an info, I want you to make me an infographic on the use of visual data and in infographics using a template of your choice. Use the data presented in the discussion background, also listed below, or you can actually download the document here. So if you were to download this, is a Word document, so go ahead and click on that and open this up in Word and you'll see this information right here. Okay. So you can copy and paste that in there. <laughs> okay, from the research, so all this information needs to be in your, um, in your infographic. From the research you did in the discussion, find a template that works for the data and customize it to fit the purpose. You can find free options here. So there's a link here you can go to or wherever you kind of maybe you found somewhere else that you think would work for this. Um, so let's go over some of the percentage here, uh, some of the facts here. So 90% of the information transmitted to the brain is visual. So this is about uh, the power of um, the power of infographics should be your headline. Forty percent of people respond more to visual information than text. Eighty-four percent of communication will be visual by 2018. Infographic design increases one percent each day, and approximately 13 million results on the search for infographic on Google. Infographics are liked and shared on social media three times more than any other type of content. So that's kind of what you're dealing with. I would say the headline could be the power of infographics, something like that. 
Um, it's not given to you, but obviously you need a headline in there. All right, so let's go through the assignment of requirements. You need to include all the listed data in the infographic. Add a headline for the infographic, your choice. Choose appropriate charts and or graphs to accurately relay the information. Choose any icons or graphics uh, appropriately, appropriately to fit the content. Things to keep in mind, pick the appropriate data vis visualization for your information. How does the template fit, your, uh, fit with your message? Consider the takeaway first. What should the audience learn from the infographic? Create an engaging and engaging headline proposing a question um, that your infographic will help to answer will immediately spark interest. Hierarchy, give the most important information the most visual weight so that the viewers know what to take away. And consider your font and color choices. Keep the palette simple and relevant. So all the things to uh, kind of keep in mind. Submission requirements, depending on the service you choose, you'll be given different options of files to save most likely a JPEG, ping, or PDF. If it does not offer any file download options, you may submit a link to the completed design or take a screenshot. If you submit a file, name it this name with your first and last name. Provide a reference link to the template service you used in the comments section of the submission. All right, and this is worth 50 points and there's uh, the rubrics down here you can take a look at. So basically you're gonna um, use a template for this particular uh, assessment so you're gonna plug in the information there. So I'm gonna click on this link just to see what this, um, this is showing. So 13 incredible tools for creating infographics. It's showing you some sites here that you can uh, utilize. Some of them you may have to pay, um, but you know it'll show you if it's free, basic, um, and so on and so forth. And here's a couple, let me get rid of some of these. Some of these you might want to take a look at some of the descriptions since this one is not aimed at this one. This one is aimed at non-designers. You don't you won't have the kind of control on offer with some of the other tools. So kind of can you know be aware of that. But there's a whole bunch of um, of different ones in here you can check out. I think I've used this one before. Um, you can put your resume in here, it's kind of cool. Some of these are for specific things, so. All right, so choose the one you want to do. You might want to click and just kind of check out some of these. Just click right on the name there, and it should open it up. You might want to kind of just play around with a couple of these. You don't have to go with one or the other right away. Just kind of see what they're all about. Okay, some of these you have to sign up, so give me one second. Sign, my, sign in here. And this one I'm checking out is easily, easily. So you can sign in with your Facebook account, your Google account, usually it's email or something in that regards. Okay, it's working guys. Sorry, it's just taking a little while here. Okay, and then once it opens, You have what appears to be, and some of these interfaces might be a little different. Obviously, the examples will be different. Um, so typically, you'll want to look up something that's similar to what you're working on that's a little bit more relative to what you're working on. So we're doing more of a um, infographic, uh, facts about infographics. So, you know, maybe a report would be good for that. Um, this one looks like it's a little, 
Here's user content. You can do an empty one, so you know you can um, create it from scratch as well. So when you click on it, you're able to customize your information here. All right, so this one, you basically go in here and you actually edit each of these cells. So this might be too much for what we need, right? Because there's just a lot of information in there. We might not need this much information. So you kind of have to pick through. I would say these are probably all very complicated. So maybe I will um, maybe choose one that's a little bit more simplified here. Try this one. May have to click through a few here. I actually um, I actually haven't looked at all of these, but since we're we're all here, you guys can see the process that I'm going through because you will be doing the same thing. All right, so for this one, they're giving me, once I sign in here, and this is the Vinian, Vin, Vin Gage, I don't know how I say that. Uh, let's do this here. All right. Um, so something very quick, like the infographic. Uh, here, we want that. And um, so let's pick, help us write recommend relevant templates for you. Okay, so they're asking you what's good, what you're kind of looking for. So just kind of scroll through here. That's kind of cool design thinking. These ones with pie charts. And I like these because they're more simplified. So just kind of see what they have decide which one you think would work best for your for your information. So I would say if I were to pick any of these, so it's timeline, design thinking. Let's try this one. This one, oh, we gotta pick two more. This one. Maybe this one. All right, so then they give you recommended templates. So every site's different. You might wanna just, you know, check out what everybody has. So on the left side here is recommended featured layouts, see all templates, and then categories. So you can actually look and see if there's any categories that are relevant to um, what we're doing here. There's actually mind maps, that's kind of interesting. Um, so, I would say more informational is what we're looking for, right? So let's see, informational. Okay, some of this is a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more of what we need, just a little more complicated. So choose one that's a little bit more simplified, I think, for this particular assessment.
All right, so I'm just perusing through these just to see what I have here, what aligns best with my information. Statistical, this will give you percentages here. This might be good because you have percentages within your uh, within your thing. Here. Let's try this one. This one has pie charts. So I click on create. So basically. It's going to tell you like what your information is here through the walkthrough. Click to add widgets, add charts, maps, text, icons, or images to your infographic. Click to edit. Customize with the toolbar. Share, download. Need more help. And let me zoom out here if I can. Okay, so this is a pretty simple type of a chart. I think this is um, one that would be perfect for this. Um, except, you know, we got to change some things here. Like, for instance, the headline. So I would say um, something to kind of pull the, the viewer into reading this. Um, let's see, when do we we have one, two, three. I'm just counting all the percentages in that information. We have one, two, three, four. Yeah, four. Okay. So basically, let's see here. Let me change this here. Okay, learn how to edit charts. So this one, okay. What, enter data, enter your data manually or copy and paste it in a spreadsheet. Okay, so we have what appears to be months, May and June. And, uh, to figure this out here. Okay, so what we want is we want 90% as the first number here because it says 90% of the information transmitted to the brain is visual. We want 40% here. Let me see if I'm doing this right, 84. Oh, okay, it's changing that top one. Okay, so we just went 90%. We just went 90. Okay, so you can pick different charts, chart styles. Um, you can add legends here, settings, and then save. Okay. So 90%, we want to do 90%, and this looks like, let's do 90 and see what that is. Okay, so maybe we'll do 10 and 90. There we go. Okay, so what we're showing here is we want to put 90 for, and it says May, but really we're not caring about that. We just want this to be 90 and 10 to equal 100. That way your orange part will represent your 90% and the little yellow part will represent the 10%. Uh, 
And then we can all change this in here to be 90%. And then also we can highlight this. Oh, this is a specific font here. We just want this to be a little smaller. Okay, so that's 48. And then we can add the information in here. That, that is from your uh, Word file. So what we could copy from here is, go back to my, here we go. We'll paste in there. Information transmitted to the brain is visual. So we wanna say, oops. Ninety percent. And when you're done, we want to make sure we save this. Or else it's not going to save. So we gotta do that. And where's my save button here? There we go. Let's hit publish. We don't want to publish, we just want to save. How do we save this? Sorry guys, I'm a snapsy guy, undo. Let's go to, so if I leave this, there we go. Save it, okay. The next um, one would be the 40% of people respond more to visual information than text. So we would want 40, right, 40%. And then double click on the chart. Why is this changing this? So what we want to do is we want 40% here and we want 60 here. Okay, so kind of making that orange be the 40%. Okay, and I'm gonna go back to my Word file and copy the next factual information for this specific percentage. And this is people respond more to visual information than text. Um, so that's good. And then this one would be the 84%. So you would have eighty four here, and you would have sixteen here. Is that equals 100? It doesn't look like 84, does it? 16. There we go. That looks better. Okay. Let's say that looks like half. All right. So the 84% of communication will be visual by 2018 is what we're copying in here. So we'll just copy paste. Shift return. So let's shift that down so it's not a widow. Uh, the next one is infographic design increased by 1% each day. So we want 1%, and then obviously 99.
So it's a nice visual way to see um, to see this information. Okay, and then 13 million. The rest are um, more of facts that wouldn't go into a pie chart. So I'm just going to delete this information. I'm just selecting it and deleting it on my keyboard. But we need to include it anyway because it's the information that needs to be in here. So I would probably add that maybe in the subhead, maybe one of the um, things in your subhead. So Okay, so maybe in this case, what we'll do is we'll add, let's go back to this. The origin, okay. So maybe right here we'll put 13. And then we'll slide this over. And we'll type in here a num um, 13 million search results or let's get rid of this. Delete that. Okay, 13 million search results for graph infographic. So I'm going to choose the headline here, the power of infographics. Center that. Maybe swap these out here. So this will go down here. So I'm just basically pulling this information down. If I can grab it all. I think you can group this. Okay. All right. So the power of infographics would be the headline. Now we just have to balance everything else out. Whoops. So let's do that. Let's grab all of this. I'm doing a shift select. So I'm shifting and selecting all of my percentages and all of my information here. Hopefully grouping everything I need and then moving it to the right so it's centered. So really, if you're doing a pie chart for this, you'll only have four facts to pie chart. The rest of it isn't percentages, so you have to kind of be aware of that. It's down a little bit. There we go. All right. Um, 
so the only piece of information that we're missing is infographics are liked and shared on social media three times more than any other type of content. So what you could do with that, and you can, you can add graphics to this too. Like say if you didn't want to make this as, let's, let's change this up. Okay, so let's do this. Let's ungroup this because this almost does look like a headline. So let's, let's get rid of that. We're gonna add our own type of information here. We're gonna make this a little smaller. We want this to be less headline-like. Okay. All right, so then what we want to do is we want to um, import, and I, I already went and looked for this, so I'm gonna browse on my on my folder that I saved kind of icons that would go with this. So I went and did like a search for icons that would match this particular um, let's see, particular information. So ping, upload the ping file. So I just did a little Google. Um, Image. So grabbing it. Oh, here it is. Let's trash that one. I didn't see that it actually did it. So I can actually place this in, although it does does have a white background, which you know I don't really want. So let's trash that. So I'm gonna go and look for. Google G and just do an image search here. Yeah, this is one of this might work here. I thought I did a ping, but I guess I didn't. Okay, let's try this. Let's trash that one. Let's try it again. <sighs> Sorry, guys, I have a spider on my screen here. I expect to have to smash it. Dead spider. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, so let's open this up and see if this comes out with a, uh, it may or may not, there we go. So it has like a transparent, that's a ping file with a transparent background, that's what we wanted. So make it smaller, just kind of like what you do normally when you're downsizing the box here. And then what we'll do <coughs> is we'll just set this up <coughs> <coughs> so that the information kind of flows through here. And then this one will be the other information. So we'll make this a little smaller. Can make it work for this. So maybe what we'll do is we'll do like centered alignment because all of this is centered here. Um, I think we have, do we have an alignment options here? Let me see. Yeah, we do. Right here. Okay. 
There we go. And then we'll just put this on top. Make sure it's centered on your page. You just might have to make this a little smaller. Okay. And the other um, information that we have to put in here is infographics are liked and shared on social media. So I'm just going to plug that in. Make sure it's the center aligned. Get rid of the bullet point in there. It's a bullet point. Oops. Why that has a bullet point on it? Let me check and see what's going on here. Color. So delete that bullet point. There we go. All right. Oops. I'm just going to center this information here. So maybe what I'll do is have this stuff kind of on the bottom, kind of rearrange it. Let's see here. Make this a lot bigger, because this is our headline. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Okay, and then this information will come up here. And then we can center all this, just select it all. Not again. Okay, and then just move this information down here. So it's really just kind of balancing out the information. You can switch things around. but you should have like a headline and obviously all the information provided. I'm just kind of switching it up. You can even um, adjust the color. You know, if you're not digging the color here, I think you can adjust the color. Let me, let me not say that and then it not be true, right? <clears throat> All right, so let's see, what do we got? Uh, oh, you have all kinds of different icons too that you can put in here. On your left side, you can actually add more charts to this. Icon charts. Lots of stuff, lots of different options here. <clears throat> you can actually uh, upload your own photos like you just saw me do um, and, and stuff like that. So you can actually add stuff to this. Here's the background color. So you can change that if you think that needs um, a little bit of a change.
You go deeper in color. You just have to change the rest of the uh, the stuff there. So that's where the color is. If you wanted to change the color, all right. Um, image frames. If you wanted to import an image, that's how you would do that. Icon charts. Okay, so they might actually have Google in here. Let's see. They might not have had to put that in there. Yeah, they do. So I can probably get rid of that. It looks like it gives you a whole bunch of options here. We just want one. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. It looks like it, it places all kinds of uh, icons in here. You should be able to like edit out some if you wanted to, but I don't get it. Let's see. Hmm. No weird. So maybe I'll just bring that Oops. Google image back. Oh, I guess I have to put the 13 in here. 13 million. Do they all come in that way? Yeah, I guess they do. Huh? That's really weird. There's media. You could do something cool with that. Um, user interface. There must be a way you can edit this. So you don't have all these, you know, we have one versus a whole bunch. Oh, okay. I see what this is. Okay. So this is actually a chart. It's showing you one out of, okay. That's probably why. So those are icon charts. Okay. Gotcha. If I just want icons, what I was just looking for here, then I would just go to icons, social media. Sorry guys, I should have known that that was the case there. Technology, let's see what's in there. We may not have Google in there, but There's pie charts, all kinds of really cool stuff in here. You can play around with. You can actually use this as a background too. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'll try to pick a good one here. Um, to represent infographics. Uh, hmm. That's kind of cool. So you can add a background, like let's say just for added interest, you could add a background, something just to blow up, make like more of a textured look to it. This might not be the best one for this. Let me pick one that's a little bit more symmetrical here. Let's 
it's showing more squares, but just for the purpose of showing you how you could use this as a background element. I'm gonna choose this one. It might not go well with this, but you get what I'm saying. All right, so we'll choose the color. Let's go with that green, and then we can go a little darker or a little lighter. Let's go a little lighter. And then move backwards. We'll just keep hitting move backwards, and we'll go behind all of our elements here. There we go. So you could do something like that. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the best info, like, inf you know, graphic for this, but, you know, you get the idea, hopefully. Here's one that's a little bit more round. This looks like an atom bomb, nucleus. So you can kind of change it up based on what's relevant for your poster, what looks like it aligns with your poster. Okay. Move these up here. It's probably a different way that I could do this. Like if I were to make 13 larger and a different emphasis here, like we did before. Oops, I have to do it separately. Oops. So I'd have to take the number 13 out. Take my type tool. Is there a type tool in here? Let's see. Yep. Oh, there's all kinds of different fonts that you could do too. So um, I'm just going to do a simple text box here and then I'll just go ahead and change it to a font that I think works for this. Okay. Okay, and then just moving this back down. Why does it keep saying 13? I'm like deleting that. Delete. Just putting it back. Okay. So you can do something like that or 13. I would probably put it next to it. Make this a little smaller. Or you can put it in the middle, I guess. Just have to rearrange things. kind of move it together and then kind of adjust everything else based on that. I 
just bumping all of this up a little bit. Let me sneeze here. <laughs> Bless me, guys. Whew. But I think you get, hopefully get the idea of how you can edit this or edit a template for your own, um, you know, for, for the, to be relative for this particular assignment. All right, we're going to take a five minute break here and we'll go back um, to everything that we just kind of went over. We'll do a little review here. Um, take a five minute break and I'll be right back.
Okay, we are back. So where we ended was just creating this template infographic based on our assessment one information. When you're finished, there should be an option depending on, you know, which um, template that you chose, the software should, there should be a download or a sharing option. If you choose download, you have uh, for this particular website some uh, it's saying export is not available unless you upgrade. So you might, uh, you know, I don't want you guys to spend money on this. So just go ahead and either screenshot, so do a command shift four, screenshot what you have. I would do it without this chat window in here down below. Or let's see what they do. Please upgrade to access the feature. You can't even share it here unless you uh, upgrade. So what I would do is just do a screenshot, command shift four to create your um your your anchor points to click and drag over and go ahead and take that picture if you're on a mac um that's the screenshot option or screenshot uh keyboard buttons to choose and then once you're done let me share my desktop here real quick so once you're done doing the screenshot, just double click on your screenshot. You can see your screenshot is basically what you just took with your, um, with your anchor points that you put around your screen. Then you could go ahead and rename this, just clicking right on it, DES 240 assessment one, first and last name. And then this is what you would submit. I took two screenshots, so throw that in there. So this is what you would submit for your assessment. Okay. Feel free to, um, uh, you know, don't, you don't have to use the same headline that I used. Feel free to create a headline that you think works for your project uh, for this particular uh, infographic. Just make sure that you're choosing something very simple for this. I don't think you have to go crazy, you know, choose a, a infographic that's more simplified, I think is the key for this because there's not a lot of information. There's a lot of statistical information, a lot of percentages. So a uh, pie chart would work perfect for this. Um, but just make sure you're providing all the information within, within the uh, project itself. So all of this information here, okay? All right. You can, yeah, I would just say, I would just, you know, uh, upload that screenshot if you, if you can't export it in any other way. All right, let me see if I have any other information for you guys. I think we kind of went over um, most of this here. Okay, I think we did kind of hit upon that. Just make sure that, you know, you're providing a hook uh, in your um, <clears throat> in your infographic to kind of catch the viewer's eye. This is kind of what, what was talked about in the background here. So you want to pull in the audience in some way with a hook. Maybe it's the headline, maybe you're posing a question and then stating the facts. Um, you know, maybe it's just the actual infographic itself. Maybe there's something visually interesting that's pulling the, the viewer's eye. Um, but yeah, just kind of click on the um, link here if you want to use any of the software provided in here. You know, just kind of peruse through and see what each of these um, companies have in regards to uh, like their style of infographics. I, and again, I would probably steer you towards more of a simplified um, infographic. There's some that are really, really, really kind of have a lot of information. So I would steer clear of that and just choose something more simple. But go through these, read, you know, read each one of these and, and kind of just go through all the templates to see which one you may, may gravitate towards that you think uh, may be more, 
would work for this particular subject. Remember, we're talking about infographics. So you want to make sure that, you know, there's no imagery that wouldn't be relatable to that. You want to make sure it's uh, relevant to the information within it. Okay. I think the one that I just used is called Vengage. This is the one that I used. But as you see, I, I kind of clicked on a few just to look at their templates and see what they have um, in regards to all of their templates. Some of them didn't quite work. So I skipped on ahead with another one. So you might do the same. I didn't check out all of these. Um, this one is actually, I wouldn't choose this one because this one's for your resume. So there's there may be other ones that are better, you know, related to what we're talking about. You can even look up free infographic templates. You know, there's just, you know, so many different uh, sites that you guys can check out. I would go with the websites that actually help create it, not just like vector art. Um, this is Canvas, it's another one that was in that list. Um, but you can kind of, you know, take a look at their templates in here and let's see if there's any that you think works really well with um, this particular subject. And just kind of play around with it. And I think what's interesting about this assessment is you guys are discussing the pros and cons of using templates for your discussions. So not only are you going to be creating your custom, uh, your very own customized infographic for week two eventually, but you're also working uh, with a template in assessment one. So you'll kind of get if you haven't had that experience yet, you'll get to do both and kind of think about the pros and cons of each. Um, so I think discussing it is one thing and then actually doing it is another. So you guys are practicing and also discussing it within your discussion. So that's a good thing, you know, so you're learning uh, all sides of the situation and perspective there. All right, so um, I think that's all I have for you guys today. We keep it kind of short and sweet here. Whoops. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I am here for you guys. This is just infographics I was sharing before. I'm here for you guys, so if you have any questions, let me know. Um, we will be meeting, um, um, let me go over this so you guys hopefully are a little bit, because this week was just kind of crazy with the schedule. Um, but we will be meeting next week week two, let's go through Canvas here. And now these hours will be a little bit more consistent. So this was for this week, our hours were kind of different from the rest of the weeks. But week two will be meeting Wednesday and Thursday. If you're mountain time, this is kind of the breakdown here, 10.30 will be the time we meet in the morning. If you're Eastern time like me, 12.30 would be when we're meeting a specific, Pacific and Central also listed as well. But just kind of keep note, week two is Wednesday and Thursday, week three is Monday and Tuesday, and then week four is back to Wednesday and Thursday. The hours are the same, just kind of switches days um, every, you know, every week that we meet up here. I did post the first live lecture here. This is where you would find the recording. This one will actually be posted here once we're done. So you can uh, review that recording um, when this becomes available. All right, guys, uh, good luck with your projects. Let me know if you have a roadblock or something, you know, holding you back that you need help with. I am here, like I said, just go ahead and shoot me an email, get back to you as soon as I can. Um, let's end this week strong, get your discussions in and get your, your projects in on time before midnight on Saturday. And then we can kind of build upon it. If you turn in your week one work late, it's going to hinder what, what you produce in week two because it's a build upon project for assignment one. You'll be building upon it. So if you're not giving the allowable time to go through your process and your content strategy and you're kind of getting it all done, you know, within a you know, couple days, 
it's going to show with the quality of your work. So make sure you're getting that done, going to the next step of the process. Um, give yourself enough time to do that so that you can have a quality piece at the end of this you know, project. All right. So I'll be seeing you guys on the discussion boards again. Let me know if you have any questions. And um, I think I might have some examples to show you before we actually call, wrap it up um, for your assessment one. So let me grab those real quick here. I might just have one example. Hold on a second. Thought I had more, but I guess I don't. Oh, I do. I do have more. Hold on one second, you guys. So these are from another class, student examples. Yay, I have some examples to show you guys. Good. All right, so here we go. Okay, so this is, these are all student examples that you can kind of, you know, be inspired by. This is a particular infographic here showing you, um, um, it, it's kind of numbering the process here. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Maybe more so instead of having it numbered, maybe having like one, two, three, four, maybe having the actual percentage in there. Um, like 90% there, 40%, and then doing it in a way where it makes sense so it's not going down. It's kind of based on the percentage that you're showing. Um, here's another one. You know, and you can kind of think about, you know, does this pull me in? Does this, is this uh, an effective infographic? You know, ask yourself that. The rise of the infographic. How will the face of visual communication change? There's a question there. Now, this is a good example here of how you can uh, pull the viewer in. So it has a nice little intro with a question for the subhead. And then you have the 90% showing there, 84% of pie chart. You have the line uh, showing the 1%. I'm not quite sure if I get that, but down below there is the other information um, provided. And it's showing, you know, the little Google 40% and the social media icons. Uh, visual data and infographics, how are they impacting us? Very simple, very sweet. And then this goes, you know, kind of linear. Nicely done here, very simple but linear. Easy to read, understand. Another one. So you can kind of say, well, which one it, you know looks easier to understand? Here's another one using icons and graphs. Kind of interesting. So you know, be inspired by what you see here. Know the options are available through your templates that are here's another one. Um, and you know, have fun with it. I think this is uh I think this is the fun project here too. It's just once you get all that information plugging in, what can you come up with? That's the fun part. Okay, here I'm like trying to figure out where my PowerPoint is. All right, I lost my PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, don't forget to post your discussion initial post before midnight tonight. And uh, let me know if you have any questions.